Guess what time it is, baby. Definitely using a blanket for this one. I was just sitting here watching golf when I suddenly realized I haven't filmed a video in far too long, so I thought like, <laughs> maybe you should like do your job. So yes, today we're doing an updated what is on my iPhone. I have new apps, I have new widgets, I have new things that I do, and I feel like it's time to share it with you. Bars. I would love to say that I've gotten the iPhone 15, but I just have not. I remember the day when I used to always get the new phone so that I could make videos about it. And now I'm more of a practical, budget-friendly girly. Like, I don't need the new one because this one is fine. This is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. I have other videos related to this that I'll link down below if you want. Okay, so we're just gonna get right into it. Let's just get right into it, okay. So starting on the lock screen, right now it's pretty simple. This is a photo I took in Hawaii, absolutely gorgeous. One thing about me is I can't stick to the same background and widgets. I have to switch my phone all the time. Shout out to all the girlies out there who can like leave their same vision board background as their wallpaper for an entire year. I'm just way too ADD for that, but kudos. So right now it's a photo that I took in Hawaii, which was cool. In terms of my widgets, the very top one is just, I think a widget from Color Widgets. I love having the sunrise and sunset time. So happy that the sun is starting to set later again. That is very, very nice. And then this other one, it's from this app that I think is called Motivation. It basically just rotates through kind of motivational quotes on the daily, so that's cool. I'll link them down below. And then this other widget is to easily access the Flow app, which I'll talk about later, but it's pretty much the only app that I use to shoot photos now. It's like a pro camera app and it is so good. So that's really all I have for my lock screen. All right, so moving on to my first homepage. Let me get comfortable first. Okay, that's fine, sure. Ooh, but it's getting kind of hot. This is definitely the page of just everything I use on the daily. So starting with the widgets, this calendar widget in the upper left is actually just from the calendar app. I really like that when iOS 17 came out, the calendar widgets updated. So it used to just be kind of these ones, which are cool, but now they have a little more like bigger aesthetic kind of looking ones. So I think that's pretty dope. And I just have that in the upper left. So next are my Notion widgets. I'm probably gonna make an entire video about Notion because it has literally changed my life. I pretty much operate my entire life out of Notion now, so. <laughs> I'll keep you posted on that. But these two widgets are the ones that I definitely need to access the most on the daily. So we have today's to-do list, which looks like this. There is kind of first an overview of the week that I can put things on if I want. And on desktop, it kind of looks better. And then I just have like a checklist of pretty much my to-do list for each day. So I try to plan it out the night before. I have any morning routine items and then just like straight into work stuff. Throughout the day, if I think of something I need to do, I can write it right here, do the thing, get it. And then I can just cross it off when it's done. So that's pretty sweet. I'm a big list girl, big list girl, BLG, baby. And then the next one is my video planner. So this one looks very chaotic on mobile. It's definitely better on desktop, but this is basically where I plan all of my videos across all platforms. I have like a table for each platform and then just all these different things with like templates. So every time I go to plan a video, I just have a template right there that I can fill out instead of kind of starting from scratch. I have ADHD, so I need every tool I can possibly get to like streamline my workflow. Man, it's still hard even with these tools, but doing the best I freaking can, okay? So again, I wanna make a whole Notion video. I think that would be so sweet. And then the lower right, I have the Google Count. Hello? Oh shit, I'm already sweating, so the microphone is coming off. Hold please. Freaking boob sweat, man. I think we're back in business. Uh. Um, oh, Google Calendar. So I've been an Apple Calendar girl my whole life, honestly, like, I just love it. But I ended up switching to Google Calendar because this AI scheduling app that I use called Motion, not to be confused with Notion, only integrates with Google Calendar. So I switched everything to Google Calendar. It's fine, but it's like, honestly, I, I don't know. It's little things that bother me about it, but that's cool. But look at all the tax deadlines. Love it. So then I have this daily folder, which if you guys have watched my previous What's On My iPhone videos, this has pretty much not changed in like five years. I have a daily folder with like all the basics. I don't even need to talk about these. These are, yeah, things I use every day. Then we have social media folder. Honestly, like out of these, I really only use Instagram and TikTok the most. Instagram, I've been on my Reels game lately, you guys. I really have been going ham on the Reels. So I don't know, maybe give it a follow if you feel like it. I'm doing little vlogs and stuff, so that's cool. TikTok, man, I wanna get back to posting so bad. It's definitely my goal. I have 800,000 followers and I have stopped posting. <laughs> it stresses me out, uh, but I really, really wanna start making videos again there because that used to be so fun. So I've got those, obviously Spotify, gotta, Aura Ring, 
don't have it on, but I use that. Oh, random, but this Snap Tick app. Basically, if you ever want to download a TikTok without the watermark, but you missed the window of like doing it while you're editing it, you can use this app. And then Pinterest and YouTube. I actually do kind of scroll these often. I love using Pinterest for like inspo, except there's way too many ads these days, which is kind of annoying. And then YouTube. Oh, I'm a big like zit video. <laughs> Never mind. I don't even want to admit that. Uh, anyway, I'm trying to watch more YouTube because I feel like it inspires me. I've obviously had a hard time filming for like a long time now. So I feel like whenever I watch like content that I think is interesting, it just inspires me and it makes me want to actually film again, like right now. Cool. Oh yes, CapCut. I've talked about this many times, but I absolutely love CapCut for editing videos on mobile. I usually just use Final Cut Pro on my computer, but CapCut is free and they have a bunch of really, really cool features. The one that I use the most for sure is like the auto captions feature. I use it pretty much on every video and literally all you have to do is click one button and it captions your videos and you can change the style of them, which is super cool, like very easily. Like so, woo. I mean, I don't like that one, but you know, you can literally do whatever you want. Anyway, base camp, my gym, as you guys know. And then these upper two, I don't know why I'm going so out of order. Dispo and Flow. So Dispo is one of my favorite apps for like taking photos on a night out or someone's birthday or something. And the reason being that the free version doesn't allow you to look at the photos until 9 a.m. the next day. You basically just pick a filter. I usually use this pride one and you snap the pick. And then as you can see, you can't view them until the next day. So you always have a little surprise to wake up to. You kind of forget what photos you took. It's almost like you're getting them developed. So I love that just for like fun Z's. <laughs> and finally I have the Flow app. So I could talk about this forever. So I probably need to make a separate video on just the camera apps, but this is a pro camera app and it was created by like two of my favorite influencers slash videographers. I've been using their presets for years, but they came out with this app. It is so incredible. It does cost money, but it's so worth it. There's a free trial if you guys want to check it out. Okay, actually I'm just going to give you a live demo of the Flow app. So let's take some pics. Here we go. It has this like interval timer situation. So we're going to turn that on, but basically you can shoot photos through this app and they shoot raw. So more data to be able to manipulate in editing than just like the iPhone camera. And what I love about it is that they have all these presets. So when you're shooting, you could kind of have an idea of what your edited photo will look like first. Once you actually take it though, it captures it just completely raw. So you can always change the filter afterwards, which is super cool. I think you guys get it. Let's go back to the video. People always think that the photos that I'm posting are from a DSLR nice camera and they're literally just iPhone photos. I also love that you can shoot video with presets. So if you just wanna post quick Instagram stories, but you want them to look aesthetic AF, you can shoot through here. What's up? Here we go. This is the example. So yeah, I'm obsessed with Flow. I have taken so many good pictures on there and I highly recommend it. Okay, another camera app that's not on this page, but that I just re-downloaded last weekend and I am obsessing over is the Teza app. I used to use it way back in the day. This one I've been using for more of the kind of like vintage, nostalgic, like VHS type of edits. As you can see, like here's this random photo that I took and edited in the Flow app, by the way. But then if I bring it into here, what I love is there's all these different film grains filters. I really like this one. I do pay for this one as well. I think it's $5.99 a month. I just wanted to try it and see if I liked it. I do, so probably gonna keep it. But another thing that I love is adding subtitles or text. Desert, fun, I don't really know. I'm also in like a flash photography era right now. So I took my G7X out and I was like shooting photos of us at the bar and stuff. And so then I just brought them into here. So like, this was the before, this is the after. So I'm loving that app as well. I don't know, I'm kind of having a revival with cool photos and just aesthetic edits. So those are the three that I've been really loving right now. Okay, moving on to my second page. Right off the bat, I have two habit trackers actually, and I'm trying to decide which one I like more. So the first one is one that I created in Notion, because like I said, my whole life is in Notion. It has a little calendar. I clearly haven't used this since January, but you can kind of create the things you want to be tracking, and then there's a little progress bar underneath. So you literally just like click to add a new month. I'm gonna add that now. So either that one, or I have this app called Me Plus, but this one is a lot kind of simpler and more clean and just like check, check, check. So I don't know, but I've kind of been just not using either lately. So we'll see if I actually stick to any of them. John read up at the top. That's my other gym. I actually need to cancel it because I never go. Lightroom is what I used to use before I started using Flow, so I probably don't really need it anymore. God, the microphone keeps slipping. Why does it always get hot when I film? You know what? 
I'm just gonna hold the gosh dang microphone. I hope you can hear me now. So Yuga is a random AF app. You can scan the labels of food and it'll tell you if there's any harmful additives and just kind of give you like a rating of the foods you're eating. I have been trying to get a little bit better about having like cleaner ingredients and no food dyes and things like that. Not none, but just like a lot less. Like it's just really hard to read labels at grocery stores. It takes a lot of time. You don't know what anything means. So I've been really liking the Yuka app. Notion, which you already know. Speaking of food, we have DoorDash and Belly down here. So DoorDash, obviously food delivery. I use it way too often, but sue me. And then Belly is really cool because I used to just have a note in my phone that was like all the restaurants I wanted to try and which ones I love. But now there's a freaking app. I log every time I go to a restaurant and I get to rank it. I get to write any dishes that I loved or didn't like. That's something I always want to remember is like, oh, did I get this before? And I feel like I didn't like it. I don't want to make that mistake again. Or if you know you want to try it, you can toggle the little save button and it'll show up on your places you wanna try. So that's pretty cool. This food app was a macro tracking app. I do not track macros or calories or anything like that. I got this because when 2024 hit, I did wanna to try to start tracking my protein. I was just not getting enough whatsoever. And I wanted 2024 to be Operation Big Booty, which means your girl needs protein. But um, as with pretty much any other new habit, it lasted about two weeks and then I stopped tracking. So that's always really good. I also have another flow camera widget right here. I probably don't need that again, but <laughs> there it is. Um, and then last but not least, Pronti. I was actually really excited about this app. It is like a digital closet organizer. I've been wanting one of these for so long. It's just seemed really treacherous going and logging every single piece of clothing I own. But basically what you do, if you get the chance, you take photos of your pieces of clothing and then you sort them into sections of your closet. So I haven't fully utilized it yet because I haven't logged everything yet, but I didn't want to like spend a whole day doing this and then end up not liking the app. I've only gotten yay far. <laughs> it kind of just helps you see all of your items and actually put together outfits and you can put them on a calendar. It also has AI that can try to put outfits together for you. So that's pretty sweet, if you know what I mean. God, I am getting blinder by the minute, you guys. Well, lucky for you guys, there's really only one more page. This is where I keep basically folders of things that I do use the most, but not every day. But right at the top is one of my favorite things ever on earth. And if you watched my iOS 17 video, I talked about it. This is a new feature of the Reminders app and you can make a smart list. So for groceries, there's a specific list you can make, the grocery list. And basically every time you add a new item like oranges, it automatically categorizes it into the section of the grocery store that you need to go to, which is sweet. And then you can just cross them off as you go. So throughout the week, I'll just literally add whatever I need from the store onto this list and it's ongoing, which is great. Then I just have all of these things, work, travel, shopping, really nothing life-changing in here. Scroll can be kind of cool. I used it for like a couple of the pictures on my Hawaii vlog, no carousel. What am I saying? Banks. I mean, I could do a whole video on just money apps, but capital, you guys know, I've talked about this all the time. It's the best automatic savings app ever built rewards. So I did just get a new card where basically it allows you to pay for rent with a card that can give you points. So normally you can only pay rent with obviously a debit card or like from your bank account. So you're not getting any points or rewards. So built acts like a debit card, but actually gives you points, which is cool. Wow. I could probably delete a lot of these. I need to do a little phone clean out. I should go watch my own iPhone decluttering video. I also want to note Goodreads and Libby. I'm a big book gal these days. I need more recommendations. So if anyone has any recs for either like thrillers, psychological thrillers, or just like good stories in general, they can be love stories, they can be whatever, let me know. And uh, well, that's kind of it. I feel like that was boring. Oh, hold on. There's another page. I totally forgot about this. This page probably doesn't need to exist. I literally just have a photos widget and then a Spotify widget, some games. I've been like really messing with some word games, which questionable. Oh, this journal app. I really wanted this to be cool. It's not that it's not cool. I just don't find myself using it. I really thought I might, but you know, I just can't get behind typing on my phone. I feel like I would totally do this on my computer. I wonder if the MacBook has this app because I really wanna do it. I just, I'm on my phone so much. I think that's part of why I loved taking my digital camera out to the bar also. It's just, we're on our phones all the time. And even though we have amazing cameras on our phones, sometimes you just wanna do it old school, you know? 
I don't know what voice that was. Um, and then I have this Pomodoro app, which actually is cool for my ADD. Sometimes I need to just freaking set a Pomodoro timer. So that's all. Stay tuned for more specific apps I've been loving videos if I can stop sweating in this apartment. Maybe I'll go film outside, I don't know. But I'll leave some playlists right here if you guys want to watch any more iPhone related videos or app related videos. Leave any recommendations or suggestions down below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.